Thank you so much, Datadog, for finding a creative way to host during such interesting times. So I want to share with you all today a story, a story about Trulia.com and a massive rewrite in just one year of nearly an entire website that serves millions of people. As some of you may know, Trulia is one of just several brands that are reimagining real estate as a part of Zillow Group. At Zillow Group, we are working hard to build a seamless transaction experience for our nearly 200 million people who visit our websites and mobile apps each month. Zillow Group is the leading real estate and rental marketplace dedicated to empowering customers with data, inspiration, and knowledge around a place they call home. At Trulia, we believe that when it comes to finding a home, what's outside the front door is, right as, is just as important as what's behind it. Especially now, the pandemic has changed how many of us use our homes. That's why we're committed to helping people discover a place they love to live. At Trulia, users can buy, rent, and sell for over millions of listings, as well as look up property, school, and neighborhood data across the entire United States. Now that you're familiar with Trulia and our mission to help connect people to their favorite homes, let me introduce myself. I'm Tatiana Enslin, and I've been working at Zillow for about two years now, focusing on numerous projects within search, auth, and event-driven systems. One area I focused on heavily at Trulia was our GraphQL server, specifically the search box, as well as migrating, breaking down, and connecting services to our GraphQL layer. Now, it's not easy to transition an entire website that receives hundreds of millions of requests in a single day from an archaic architecture into a scalable and optimized distributed system with an API gateway and microservices. However, this was truly his journey to GraphQL and how we were able to avoid production chaos at both the platform and services level so that our visitors can discover a place they love to live. Today, we will be looking at a slew of topics. We'll explore where Trulia's journey to GraphQL began, what was our old architecture like, and what about it could have been better. Then we'll take a look at Trulia's new GraphQL architecture and discuss some of the reasons why we decided upon GraphQL as an API gateway. After we have a clear understanding of the overall goal for the migration, we'll dig deeper, exploring some of the most interesting challenges that Trulia faced in all, all layers of our new system architecture. I will share with you how Trulia was able to optimize our platform, services, and GraphQL server. Avoiding production chaos by taking advantage of reusability, testing, metrics, and more. I'll then share the success of our GraphQL environment and touch upon how it empowers Trulia to serve hundreds of millions of requests in a single day. Now, all journeys need to start somewhere, but before we can understand the benefits and impact of adding GraphQL to our infrastructure, it's important for us to take a look at and investigate how Trulia was previously operating. Trulia.com began initially as just a website. It started off with a PHP server, which acted almost like an API gateway to some degree, except that the website would also make Ajax requests or requests directly to internal services. At the time before our migration to GraphQL, there were about 45 endpoints in which the web client would hit that were almost entirely separated from the mobile endpoints. These endpoints still lived in the same initial PHP code base, which housed a common library that was a decade old and was still being used in production. Even more significantly, these web applications and internal services were deployed to a data center, and the majority of them weren't containerized. After Trulia gained market traction and phones and tablets started to popularize, a whole new set of mobile APIs were needed just in order to support mobile devices. These new APIs would be able to tailor to specific mobile client needs, allowing them to request the same information, but in different request and response formats. Oftentimes, our mobile apps would have to send off multiple requests to the mobile APIs to retrieve different chunks of data in order to satisfy network constraints. This would in turn require the clients to handle the response data accordingly, just to get it to show on the app as desired. At the time of our transition to GraphQL, our mobile API monolith had about 114 endpoints, and we were still adding to the list, 
as well as supporting backwards compatibility for generations of mobile software. These endpoints ranged from everything to search, login, logout, user profiles, favorites, and more. And of these endpoints, about 70 of them were receiving significant traffic, making database calls, or even making requests to other internal backend services. And as a reminder, nearly all of these services were not containerized, and they were still living within that data center. Let us consider, now that we've explored how these old architectures came about, what could be better? And what would that mean things looked like if we could solve for these problems? Coupled dependencies. With over 150 plus REST APIs, and most housed within the same few repositories, it was clear that we had a lot of coupled dependencies. Could Trulia do a better job at reusing code across mobile and web apps? Could we split these endpoints into their own microservices? And if so, how much work would that take for developers and our platform engineers to deploy, optimize, and maintain? Internal dependency management. Furthermore, Trulia's notorious common library, which housed what was its initial code for years and years, was still being pulled into newer code bases, maintaining the most up-to-date version for all of the packages across multiple engineering teams required consistent communication and slowed down development at times. Is there a way Trulia could increase developer productivity and speed up new feature development? Another point that was clear was that both the mobile and web apps needed different endpoints because they were returning different data objects. Responses for mobile and web looked different, even though both client apps are representing the same information. And remember, as I mentioned earlier, mobile applications are limited by network constraints. Making multiple requests is expensive and timely, and each request can only be so large if performance is a priority. If we could find a way to make less requests and still get back the same data that we need without having to stitch the response together, Trulia could save on both computing resources and time. Beyond that, with over 150 REST endpoints just to operate the client applications, maintaining and updating services was starting to seem like a drag. As time progressed, engineers at Trulia were maintaining more and more APIs to support backwards compatibility, ensuring production configurations and environment variables were up to date, and adding new features. This was making endpoint management messy since we had so many internal APIs that the clients had to keep track of. There just had to be a new way that made all of these things better. With all of these pain points, Trulia.com was already breaching a point of production chaos. Noticing the amount of tech debt that was starting to progressively build, engineers at Trulia investigated a new architecture, which had the potential to remedy these problems, if we could successfully transition. What was the solution to these problems? GraphQL. And so Trulia's journey began. Keeping what could be better in mind, Trulia settled on a migration to GraphQL as an API gateway. No more maintaining multiple monoliths for our mobile and web applications to run in production. If you're unfamiliar, GraphQL is an open source data querying language for APIs that act as a data graph. GraphQL servers can come in multiple languages and truly a chose TypeScript. Now, what's unique about GraphQL is that it allows the clients to query for whatever key fields that they might want, as long as those key fields exist within that public graph schema. Essentially, it's an API gateway that could be used across all clients. This server would in turn make whatever necessary HTTP requests to fetch the data and resolve each field into a corresponding response. For Trulia, this was a monumental difference. We were able to run our whole site with just two client applications, mobile and web, one GraphQL server, and now 20 plus REST APIs. Now, you might be thinking, this architecture seems to look really good, but what benefits come from implementing GraphQL? Let's dig into why GraphQL solves the pain points of our previously archaic architecture. With GraphQL, it is normal for a single data graph to be exposed that provides a unified interface for querying all backend data sources. This allows clients to fetch data from any number of sources simultaneously without actually having to know which data comes from which source. Now, mobile and web applications can request only the data that they need. Since each graph schema is available as a data contract between the clients and the backend REST APIs. 
compared to before where we had multiple monolithic applications which required security management and updated configurations at all times. With GraphQL, all of our public endpoints are now managed and configured in one single place. This makes both securing the public endpoints as well as managing environment variables simpler and easier to manage. Due to the nature of how querying works in GraphQL, mobile and web applications are able to request only the data that they need. This means no longer are, are the days where we need to separate API interfaces and responses need to be overloaded. Everything can now be in one spot. Lastly, one advantage of GraphQL as an API gateway is that it creates a single point of entry for all requests. There's just one endpoint, making endpoint management simple and straightforward for all client applications. Additionally, this means that we only need to make one request from each app. Remember how I mentioned network constraints as an issue for mobile devices? With GraphQL, requests are made efficient. But with all great things comes great challenges. Our journey continues. We may have solved for all of our previous problems. Trulia will have less coupled dependencies. Endpoint management becomes easier. Client apps only need to hit one DNS for their APIs, and requests and responses are now syndicated. This is great. GraphQL is starting to sound pretty nice. Yet, this new transition brought about a whole new set of challenges that our engineers needed to overcome if we wanted to avoid production chaos yet again. These new challenges resolved around GraphQL. How do we accomplish such a large migration in just one year? Plus, how will it fit into our platform architecture? And how can we ensure it's going to perform well alongside other services? With this, we shifted our focus to the following three goals. First, to increase developer productivity. In order to get everything done within a year, we needed to find as many ways as possible to speed up the time it took to get an application up and running and ensure that developers aren't wasting time on monotonous tasks. Second, to find a way to centralize observability in a distributed system. This is crucial and necessary as it's the most effective way to diagnose production issues. And the previous methods that we used for monolithic systems just won't translate well to a new environment. Third, to ensure that our platform performs well and is creating the most effective response times for our GraphQL server and its dependent applications and services. Now that we have an understanding of the goals which we set at Trulia, I'd like to elaborate on the steps that Trulia took in order to avoid production chaos. Starting at our first goal, we began by asking, how do we increase developer productivity? With our ambitious timeline of completing the migration in just one year, if we wanted to use GraphQL as a way to decouple our backend services, we needed a new, simple, and easy way to increase the start time that it took to get an application up and running. To increase developer productivity, we utilized multi-stage Docker images. Software developers were able to pick and choose from internally made Docker images that were customizable with truly a specific default configurations that could be overloaded. For example, pick a Linux flavor, a language, a server, and add Datadog. All developers needed to do was package their application code with one of the images, and in less than a few minutes, they would have a fully deployable containerized application. By packaging all of our Docker images with default server configs and Datadog, Trulia was able to discover production problems quicker and easier. Consequently, saving us time by allowing us to troubleshoot issues and optimize performance without having to dig deep into server logs or spend days configuring monitoring and alerts specific to each application, things that our older third-party tools might have required. With developers empowered to get applications launched easily and seamlessly, we started to question how to best centralize observability in a distributed system, especially an API gateway. To better grasp the challenge that we faced with observability, let's take a look at what our new platform looked like. Not only was Trulia in the process of rewriting the website with GraphQL, but additionally, we were simultaneously migrating to a new platform, which consisted of Docker containers orchestrated with Kubernetes and deployed on AWS. However, in order to ease the transition to AWS, we kept some of our internal services in our data center until we could safely move everything over. 
These services, which were still running in our data center, lacked the detailed metrics and analysis that Datadog was providing to our newly migrated services. Noting this, we added Datadog to these older services in order to collect data and resource consumption. Thus, better anticipating scaling needs, tuning, and infrastructure constraints once it was time to migrate those services to AWS. With over 1,000 GraphQL containers and over 12,000 total containers in production, surely logging data the old way wouldn't be an option anymore. In addition to installing Datadog to our older services in the data center, we also installed it at the platform level within Kubernetes. Doing so empowered all of our applications on our new platform to have observability nearly out of the box. Now, engineers become detectives. As a result, Trulia could now investigate resource monitoring, CPU, memory, and I.O. Even more, engineers could dig deeper and explore traces from the system level to the service and application level, enabling developers with distributed tracing and helping to identify root causes and perform backtracing. No longer do specific engineers need unique access to SSH into servers and grep access logs. Instead, every engineer can access the Datadog dashboards and monitor their own services, as well as their upstream and downstream dependencies. With a solid understanding of how Trulia increased both developer productivity and centralized observability, we now turn to our third goal, another key component of avoiding production chaos. How can we optimize our GraphQL API gateway with our platform, especially during periods of high requests? Trulia successfully accomplished this by performing several tests and tactics before we launched to production in hopes to weed out as many possible bottlenecks and points of failure in advance. Let's call this our first phase of optimizing platform performance. Like all things in technology, it's impossible to fully anticipate a live production environment. Once Trulia launched our production environment, we did a second phase of investigating performance, testing, and tuning. In our first phase, before we launched to production, we spent time testing our platform in order to remove as many issues that might happen before allowing real traffic. Us engineers at Trulia did a couple of things in order to get the platform optimized. First, we created testing clusters within Kubernetes, which was comprised of the web app and a test GraphQL server with configurations as they would be in production. Next, we created mocks of the GraphQL APIs stubbing the backend services that might be made to internal backend REST APIs. Using this mocked production environment, we ran load testing. Some tests we did were basic, like discovering the average response time from the client app for hitting the base endpoint with a minimal GraphQL query. Other tests that we performed were more complex and surrounded around how individual GraphQL resolver logic affected the overall response time from the client app client app to go round trip via GraphQL. We also used manual scaling in order to test the breaking point and assess the impact that auto scaling had on request performance. Thanks to these methods, we were able to sniff out some issues before launching. For example, we were able to discover Nginx scaling errors were increasing with load and in result, creating DNS timeout errors. Through manual scaling and the use of Datadog dashboards, we were able to narrow down the issue and tweak the Nginx server configs and resolve the problem before launching. Through manual scaling and observability, we were able to determine that scaling the pods through Kubernetes resource management did in fact help to tune round trip response time. And lastly, using load testing and manual scaling helped us to get a baseline for response times from the client app to the GraphQL server. Overall, Using production configurations, mocked APIs, and manual scaling, Trulia was able to identify issues early on and tune our platform before we switched over to public traffic. Now that Trulia had response times optimized for requests, and we felt comfortable with the issues that we were able to diagnose before using our pre-launching testing and observability, we turned our attention to some of the post-launch challenges which Trulia resolved in order to avoid production chaos. One way which we optimized our platform performance was by distinguishing bot traffic from human traffic. With a marketplace as large as Trulia's, not only do we need to handle traffic from humans, but we also need to handle 
and support tens of millions of requests per day from search bots like Google. However, we don't want these bots impacting the load times for our users. In order to optimize for both, we created a set of web servers strictly for bot traffic. Routing traffic accordingly allowed us to focus on performance tuning our human traffic for our other servers. Next, now that our production environment was launched, every mobile device and web app only needed to make one request to retrieve its necessary data. And this seems nice, yet recall that the gateway is actually making 20 plus additional HTTP requests. Now, imagine a scenario with about 3 million requests an hour. That's about 60 million requests in one hour to our downstream APIs. Certainly, fine-tuning each individual service is not going to be enough to run an entire website at scale. Knowing this, and using our newly empowered investigation tools through Datadog, engineers at Trulia began to dig deeper into our traces for our GraphQL services, looking for ways that we could reduce the numbers of outgoing requests. Having configured Datadog dashboards for our GraphQL upstream and downstream services was a major factor in helping to identify latency bottlenecks and areas for improvement. One of the most useful charts that we configured was a top list, which monitored backend requests and showed services in either green or red, depending on their latency threshold. Over time, we were able to discover trends and patterns among specific HTTP requests, which were actually bottlenecks within our API gateway. Once we were able to, ID to identify and discover which services' latencies were consistently above our, our desired threshold, we were able to look into the traces using the APM dashboard and discover that some of the slow response times were actually due to a bottleneck with the same downstream service. Many of these different services might even make calls to the same downstream service, and the ability to trace the request from the web application to the GraphQL layer through the downstream API and to its dependent service was a huge help in discovering the root cause, enabling us to have insight into our bottlenecks and tune performance accordingly. In general, narrowing down and discovering these high average latencies might seem nuanced. However, they allowed us to recognize patterns, which in turn led us to implementing Varnish, an HTTP cache, also sometimes known as a reverse proxy. Due to the fact that our multiple backend APIs were sourced from different locations, some were still on premise, some were migrated to AWS, and some were even third party APIs, Varnish was an easy way to bring caching close to the GraphQL layer. This made things a bit simpler, since keeping Varnish close to the GraphQL layer meant that we didn't have to bug developers to update anything on their side of the service. Instead, everything could be configured at the Varnish layer, and the GraphQL layer would just need updated HTTP endpoints to the services that they'd expect. Plus, if you remember, updating endpoints is much easier now with GraphQL, since everything is maintained in the same place. By adding Varnish to our most trafficked APIs, we saw improvements in our response time by at least 10x. Lastly, one challenging hurdle which we overcame at Trulia was the discovery and the resolution of the n plus 1 problem, which kind of sounds like O of n notations. In GraphQL, resolvers are functions which populate data per schema field by fetching a backend data source. The n plus 1 problem arises in GraphQL because each separate resolver has a function for every field, meaning the resolvers are unaware of each other. For example, let's take a look at a query to fetch 10 homes. For each home, you request its local school and so forth. Because the home and the school field each have their own resolver, we have one initial call to fetch the home, but we also have an extra call to fetch each school per resolver. In the case of fetching 10 homes, GraphQL fetches 10 homes in one query and then makes 10 school calls, even though it's the same school object. This ends up making 11 calls, yet it should only be done in two calls if optimized. As seen in our example, the server executes multiple unnecessary round trip calls for school, our nested field object. Consequently, in GraphQL, there's only one endpoint and it's not indicative of the potential size of the incoming request making the n plus one problem worse 
because neither clients or servers can predict how expensive a request is going to be until after it is executed. So how do you know if your code is doing this? Well, with the help of distributed tracing, we were able to discover our problem when we noticed a long train of requests being made that were kind of suspicious. Here, starting with our client and following the trace through the request to our GraphQL layer, in which you see that our GraphQL server makes one request, which we thought would only make one backend call. However, instead, as seen here with the tracing, we noticed it was in fact making 10 plus rest calls, making the overall response time for this one call an extra 300 milliseconds slower than it needed to be. Now, thankfully, there is a solution to the n plus one problem. Data Loader, a library that batches and caches requests. If Data Loader detects that you're hitting the same data source multiple times, it'll batch all of its calls together in one single call. Even more so, if Data Loader detects that a field like home has the same data for its subfields, it will actually reuse the home object that it already has in memory instead of making a new call. The benefits of Data Loader are huge as it massively reduced the amount of resources and time required to process requests. Now, with Data Loader, one request is actually just one request. Overall, Trulia's journey from an archaic monolith architecture to a distributed system with an API gateway as a GraphQL server was filled with tons of interesting challenges. However, we were able to overcome production chaos by increasing developer productivity for our engineers through the use of Docker, allowing engineers to get new applications deployed and running within our infra in just one day. Second, by setting up monitors, dashboards, and alerts for centralizing distributed observability, helping to identify root causes for over 12,000 containers, which are deployed across our entire system. And third, by optimizing performance at the platform level, discovering DNS errors early on, tuning Kubernetes and resources for the GraphQL server and internal services to perform most optimally, discovering baseline metrics early on, helping to pinpoint bottlenecks and implementing HTTP cache like Varnish close to the GraphQL layer, overall helping to reduce response times. Lastly, optimizing GraphQL performance through tools like Datadog, which allowed us to identify and resolve issues like the N plus one problem. Together, empowering Trulia to overcome production chaos and successfully handle hundreds of millions of requests every day. Again, I'm Tatiana Enslin, and I hope that you can learn from our lessons at Trulia and walk away with new ideas to help create your own migration journey. Thank you.